Hello and uh, welcome to a brief uh, introduction to Economics 220, International Trade and Investment. I'm Karsten Kowalczyk. This is a spring uh, course and uh, we're going to look at a number of questions. Why do countries trade with each other? When countries do trade, what will they trade with each other? What should they trade with each other? Why is international trade so politically divisive between countries and within countries? And can anything be done to reduce the division? And should anything be done? Why not just produce everything within these countries' own borders? And uh, economists seem to be very much on one page uh, in favor of international trade, but then why are so many voters against? Why is Brexit happening? What are the gains from Brexit? What are the possible losses? We have for years seen the United States and the EU fight over subsidies for the production of wide-bodied aircraft they export these uh, aircraft to each other. Why are they continuing to take these cases to the WTO? Should there be international free trade in vaccines? And uh, the China-US trade discord is causing some stress for international supply chains. Can other parts of the world benefit from that? Does international trade hurt or benefit the global environment? And uh, can we use international trade to create opportunities and benefits for the poor? These are among the questions we'll look at in this course. The objective of the course is to develop tools that you can use to answer these and uh, many other questions. The economics of international trade and investment is uh, very strongly uh, based in, in microeconomics. So economics 211 is a very good preparation. That's uh, the, our micro course here at Fletcher. Uh, if you've done strong work in economics 201, introduction uh, to economic theory or in managerial economics, uh, then you should also be able to take the course and, and enjoy and, and enjoy the material. If you uh, have neither of these courses or otherwise have questions, uh, then uh, feel free to make an appointment with me to talk about your preparation so we can decide together whether this coming semester is the best time for you to take this course. We will meet uh, uh, in Zoom on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1.30 to 2.45 p.m. Um, here at Boston time. Uh, my office at uh, Fletcher is Muger 252F uh, and I will have office hours from 4 to 5 p.m. and by appointment. Uh, these uh, office hours will likely be on Zoom uh, for the time being. Uh, there will be uh, two teaching assistants for the course. Um, there are two uh, MAL students, Matthew Roy and Sapna Ulal. They both took the trade course uh, this past spring, took Economics 220. They're very strong students and uh, you would be in very good hands uh, with them. Uh, they will also uh, announce some uh, office hours. The course requirements uh, are a midterm, which we will hold in class if conditions permit, and a final exam that we will have in class if conditions permit. Home oh, work problems should be submitted. Uh, they uh, are not scored, but you will receive written feedback from the teaching assistants. There will also uh, be uh, talk in the class on news of the week that are on the issues that we will cover. Um, and uh, finally, I may ask uh, some of you for uh, to offer the classroom presentations. 
course materials, uh, Caves Franklin Jones is a very important uh, trade uh, textbook that does a wonderful job at uh, the theory. Feenstra and Taylor is uh, a book that can be purchased uh, online and uh, there will be uh, articles and book chapters on Canvas or at Ginn Library. Caves Franklin Jones, as I wrote here at the top, is available for free download. Let me finally go through the topics uh, that we will uh, talk about to give you an idea. Uh, the exchange model is uh, basically about trade between people. Trade is between people. It's um, not just about firms, it really is about individuals' uh, well being. We talk about, we'll talk about how industry will enhance the gains from trade under production and trade in Roman numeral three. Roman numeral four, we will look at economic growth, uh, how that may be beneficial or hurtful to a country. And uh, also uh, we will ask whether uh, offers of uh, foreign aid should always be uh, received with thanks or whether there may be some uh, additional issues for countries that trade internationally. Roman numeral five, we'll look at uh, the role of technology for international trade. And in particular, might countries that are sophisticated te technologically want to trade, have anything to gain from trading with countries that are not. We will then move to looking at frameworks uh, where uh, we have uh, within a country's uh, factors of production, labor, capital, uh, move between uh, sectors or regions. For example, who would win and who might not from trade if some people can move between sectors or regions within a country and others not. And uh, we have seen, for example, uh, some regions in throughout the world, in countries throughout the world, some regions seem to do well from international trade, others not so much. And what about in Roman numeral seven, uh, in the so-called extra lean model, what about if everyone can move uh, between sectors or regions within a country? Will everyone in that case gain if a country uh, liberalizes trade? In Roman numeral eight, we'll uh, ask whether it's sensible that countries ship similar products to each other. For example, cars go two ways and uh, many industrial products or agricultural products go uh, between two countries in opposite directions. We'll look at uh, trade in intermediate goods and fragmentation and outsourcing which is uh, basically the economics and uh, some of the associated political economy, the politics of supply chains. What are the economic and political effects from labor, capital, or corporations moving between nations? Uh, and um, the uh, Roman numeral 11, we move to looking at trade policy instruments, how instruments uh, may affect particular economic variables. For example, in Roman numeral 11, we will have a very important discussion of uh, how it, uh, tariffs compared to other policy instruments for given domestic political goals. Under Roman numeral 12, we will look uh, at, uh, among other questions, why multilateral liberalization is viewed as being so important and why it is so hard to achieve. Roman numeral 13 will uh, discuss uh, uh, an exception uh, by GATT, the WTO, that allow some countries to liberalize more extensively, more deeply with each other than extending these privileges to everyone else. And in particular, uh, free trade agreements and customs unions. You know, why are uh, 
countries entering into these kinds of arrangements and who are good partners in such arrangements. Particular examples uh, under Roman numeral 14 are NAFTA, or now the, uh, the New America uh, uh, trade arrangements, Canada, the US and, and Mexico, as it's been rewritten, renegotiated. We have the European Union and Mercosur. These are important uh, arrangements. Are they beneficial to members? Um, and uh, what about non-members? Under Roman numeral 15, we shall look at uh, industrial policy and uh, uh, we'll ask whether protecting new domestic industries can promote uh, e economic development. Under 16, uh, an important question is whether uh, trade policy can help counter monopoly power either from uh, foreign firms that have price setting market power or domestic firms. What uh, does trade between uh, high and low labor standard countries imply for labor conditions in the poor countries uh, and in the high uh, income countries? Do they raise the standards in the poor countries? or worsen the standards in the high income countries and can trade be uh, uh, helpful to perhaps avoid sort of a race to the bottom of the standards and perhaps even raise the st standards in the poorer countries. And uh, there are uh, similar uh, important questions on trade and the environment as international trade and investment uh, benefit the global environment or, or does it uh, hurt the uh, global environment? And um, uh, we can look at whether, we will look at whether certain types of trade could be uh, uh, garnered to improve uh, the battle for uh, saving the uh, climate. Finally, we'll look at uh, the notion of competitive advantage, how uh, nations could use policies to enable strongly dynamic industries that can compete internationally. This, uh, among other uh, uh, suggestions in uh, business circles and policy circles could involve developing clusters uh, of, uh, of industries, clusters of firms to uh, develop uh, industries that become a national strength. So uh, these are topics and issues of great importance to the international community, to national economies, industries, businesses, labor, and to future generations. Uh, I look forward to sharing with you how economics can help inform us on these questions.